Hi, everyone, and thank you for attending our first webinar. Today, we're going to be talking about Bishop Water's biocord reactors uh, and their potential for enhancing wastewater treatment. So we'll be outlining some of its potential applications, um, its ability to reduce contaminants such as BOD and ammonia, and we'll summarize some case studies also involving um, biocord. So this webinar will be the first webinar in a series that we are going to be putting out weekly for about the next month or so. Um, we do have a lot of experience here at Bishop Water with wastewater treatment systems and technologies. Um, so we wanted to put together this series to share what we've learned over the years and hopefully equip our viewers with some extra knowledge um, that you may find useful when it comes time to upgrade your facility. Um, so each webinar will be about 45 minutes to an hour long and we'll focus on a different topic each week related to wastewater treatment. And although our webinars will be biocord based, the content that we're sharing, oops, sorry, the content that we're sharing will be applicable to all or most treatment systems. So even if you're not ready to evaluate a biocord system today, um, I, highly, I highly encourage you to attend the webinars so that you're fully informed when the time comes. So for example, some topics that we will include explore include um, understanding the biology and chemistry behind wastewater treatment and how to best harness the power of microorganisms to achieve a high treatment capacity, cold weather treatment and methods to combat reduced wintertime efficiencies, how you can make the most out of your pilot project or how to get the biggest bang for your buck when you pilot. So this would include what kind of data you should be collecting, how often, um, how to ensure your pilot is scalable and other considerations that maybe might not be so obvious. Um, and then finally, we'll cover how you can optimize your treatment process using computer software such as computational fluid dynamics programs or wastewater modeling programs, um, and how you can use things like sensors and probes to ensure you're maxing out the efficiency of your equipment and processes. So stay tuned for these webinars. We plan to be hosting one every Thursday at 2 p.m. EST. So let me start off by introducing myself, as well as my colleague, who will be the main presenters during this series. My name is Christine Gann, and I'm a wastewater and engineering specialist here at Bishop Water Technologies. Um, I've been at Bishop for just over three years now, and I've implemented and managed a number of projects for Bishop involving biocord and using fixed film to improve reductions of BOD and nutrients um, in existing and new treatment systems. My colleague Roberta is here as well, um, so I shall let her introduce herself. Thank you, Christine, and welcome everybody to our first webinar. Uh, I'm Roberta Maffettone, and I'm a technical uh, engineering and technical specialist at Bishop Water Technologies. I have a PhD in environmental engineering, and I joined Bishop uh, just over a year ago. And along with Christine, we try to improve Biocord and other Bishop technologies uh, with uh, specific research projects. So I will be here uh, today uh, to answer any questions at the end of the webinar. And then I will be presenting the last two webinars on the design and uh, process optimization. So have a good webinar, everybody. Thanks, Roberta. Um, I do want to mention a couple of housekeeping items just before we get started. Um, first, we will be recording this webinar, so we ask that everyone please keep their microphones on mute. Um, if you would like to ask a question, please use the chat function. You can access this key by clicking on the little chat icon. Um, it looks like this <laughs> in the top right corner of your screen. And type your question in the dialog box, which will appear down near the bottom. Um, for those of you that have joined by phone, you're welcome to email your questions to christine at bishopwater.ca. Um, I won't be addressing questions as they come in, but I will instead try to answer them at the end of the webinar just to keep us on schedule. Um, so if there happens to be more questions that I can answer during the session, I'll address them by email and send the responses to everyone who registered. Um, and we'll also follow up with an email link that has the recorded webinar and some additional information about biocord reactors as well. So before we delve straight into biocord, I just wanted to touch quickly on conventional biological wastewater treatment as a refresher on some of the main concepts, concepts behind it. 
So we use microorganisms such as bacteria and archaea to treat wastewater by harnessing their natural ability to metabolize and reduce contaminants such as BOD and nitrogen. Um, these microorganisms are naturally occurring and they will appear in wastewater always to some degree. Um, but in order for them to grow in numbers that actually allow us to achieve a high quality effluent, we need to keep them alive and proliferating. So to do this, we need to provide them with a steady source of food, which are the contaminants in question that I just mentioned, uh, as well as oxygen, which is done by aerating the wastewater. So this type of simple biological treatment system is called a suspended growth or activated sludge system um, because the microorganisms are suspended in the water column um, and supplied with oxygen by an aeration system. So an example of this would be a typical wastewater lagoon, as you see here, um, that you would find as a secondary treatment step uh, or a typical aeration basin that you would find as a secondary treatment step in a municipal wastewater treatment facility, as shown to the right. So activated sludge systems are simple in concept and can be quite effective, but they do have their limitations and challenges. Um, I've listed some of them here. So number one, ammonia and nitrogen removals can be very limited since the bacteria that reduce ammonia are slower growing than the bacteria that reduce organics and BOD. So they can be very easily outcompeted and outnumbered. Um, number two, suspended sludge systems are susceptible to shock loads and system upsets when the levels of organics entering the system is more than anticipated. Um, they don't really perform too well in cold temperatures due to the reduced activity of bacteria when the water temperatures fall below around 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. Um, and I'll go into more details about this in our cold we weather webinar. So if you haven't registered for that, make sure you do it. Um, the bacteria are also sus suspended in the water column, so during peak flows, it's common to get washout of this bacteria and therefore a reduction in your treat treatment capacity. These systems can also have high operational costs due to the need to continuously aerate a large basin or pond. And finally, it can also be quite difficult to upgrade or expand an existing suspended sludge system without also requiring new infrastructure or footprint expansion, footprint expansion, sorry, <laughs> which can be quite a challenge for facilities that um, may be limited in the resources that they can expend. So here's where BioCord comes in. So this is a picture of the BioCord reactor here on the right, um, a, a standard BioCord reactor that we would fabricate in our warehouse. Um, the BioCord reactor is a modular energy efficient technology that is designed to help overcome the limitations of conventional biological wastewater treatment. And it does this by upregulating the number and robustness of the wastewater treating microorganisms to increase the amount of removals of BOD, COD, TSS, and nitrogen that you can get. So they can be used to retrofit existing lagoons or basins in municipal, agricultural, or industrial applications. They can increase plant capacity and allow for higher volumes of wastewater to be treated. Um, and they can also be designed as standalone systems dedicated to treating a wastewater stream that doesn't necessarily have an existing system associated with it. So there are both some performance and operational advantages of BioCord. Um, some performance advantages would be that they increase BOD and ammonia removals, of course, to meet stringent discharge limits. Um, you can get simultaneous BOD and ammonia removals and increase the treatment capacity or the throughput of your system. It can increase biomass retention, which minimizes um, washout of the bacteria during high flows. And it also provides a little bit of resistance to shock organic loads as well. Um, as well, our BioCord reactors provide enhanced oxygen delivery and mixing for the wastewater, which leads to better treatment performance. It also helps to reduce odors and algae growth and also helps to minimize short circuiting um, of your hydraulic flow directly from the influent to the effluent. Um, and then we can also achieve enhanced cold weather treatment with the BioCord reactors. And we have demonstrated really great removals at water temperatures as low as 0.2 degrees Celsius. And again, we are having a webinar on this next week. So if you're interested in learning more, please join us. In addition to performance advantages, there's also a number of operational or facility specific advantages, 
including um, lower capital and operational costs than comparable systems. Um, our reactors are quite low energy. The only requirement needed to power the system or the only hydro requirement would be for the aeration. And we do use efficient compressors and diffusers to aerate our reactors. So we have lower operational costs typically um, compared to other systems. Um, it's a plug and play system which requires minimal ov operator oversight and as well um, minimal footprint if footprint is an issue for your facility. So it can be installed directly within an existing lagoon or basin without the requirement for additional tanks or pumps. Um, it's also modular and customizable for future expansion. And we also, as well, Bishop pro provides continued supports for our clients during startup and operation, um, just to ensure that the system is running as intended and to provide any troubleshooting advice if required. So this is a nice cost savings versus performance infographic that we like to use to illustrate which quadrant of our biocord um, or which quadrant our biocord technology falls under. So as you can see, compared to a lot of similar technologies, the biocord reactor offers evidence-based performance to meet stringent limits at a cop capital and operational cost that is typically much lower than its competitors. So good thing to keep in mind um, if you're ever exploring options for upgrading an existing facility. So how exactly does it work? Um, the biocord system is a bioreactor that provides beneficial bacteria with the optimal conditions for growth and proliferation. So this includes the provision of a string-like media, as you can see here, um, that has a high surface area and also a charge for the microbes to more strongly attach onto. It's also equipped with a unique aeration system that efficiently de delivers fine bubbles directly to these microbes to enhance their growth and activity. Um, and as seen on the right here, um, by creating the optimal conditions for microbes, you can create and form a very robust biofilm, which is essentially a consortium of microorganisms that stick to the surface, the media surface, as well as to each other um, to create a very robust treatment system. So the formation of a robust and stable biofilm via the biocord reactors can, um, as mentioned, help to overcome some of the challenges that are associated with conventional sludge systems. Um, a robust biofilm means that you have significantly higher concentrations of bacteria that have the ability to treat wastewater, meaning that you can reduce even higher concentrations of contaminants. Um, and because the bacteria are quite strongly attached to the fixed surface rather than just suspended in the water column, um, washout of bacteria is less common at peak flows, and so you get better treatments. Um, so this drawing here kind of illustrates an example of this. So in this simplified lagoon situation, um, you would have two scenarios, one for the summer, which is on the left, and one for the winter, which is on the right. Um, so since lagoons typically are operated as as suspended sludge systems, you will get washout of bacteria in both scenarios during both regular operations as well as more so during peak flows. Um, but the difference is that during the summer, um, the warm weather and the conditions in the lagoon are quite conducive to microbial proliferation. Um, so the bacteria that get washed out are constantly being regrown and replenished as they continue to divide and grow within the lagoon. Um, so achieving treatment isn't really too much of an issue unless of course you get overloading of your system or flows above your average system design flows. So adding a biocord reactor in this scenario can help to improve treatment during overload events because it allows the bacteria to accumulate in even larger numbers and so it is able to handle those greater loads. Um, and in the wintertime, you're similarly getting washout, but the bacteria are dormant um, because they're less active in cold weather, so they're therefore not replenished. So you end up with very little activity and treatment, unless, of course, you have something like the biocord reactor, which allows the lagoon to retain an active biomass um, that can continue to treat wastewater during both cold weather and high flows. Biofilm develops in layers, so different microclimates um, can exist within a single biofilm, as shown on this diagram to the left. Um, since substrates are constantly diffusing in and out of the biofilm, different layers will actually have varying levels of components, such as oxygen, organics, and ammonia. 
So what does that mean? It means that the biocard reactors have a very good bacterial diversity. Um, so both aerobic and anaerobic bacteria can coexist uh, in a single biofilm. This is important if you want total nitrogen reductions, since the elimination of total nitrogen requires both low and high DO constant. Uh, conditions. Um, both BOD and ammonia reducing microorganisms can also coexist, which can help to improve nitrification. And as well, you also have a temperature differential as well as a um, substrate differential. So the inner biofilm layers are actually a lot more insulated from cold weather temperatures, um, which means that more bacteria can remain active, allowing for a continuous treatment during the winter time. And next week, we're also going to be covering some of the microbial community analysis um, research that we did uh, that kind of validates all of these things. So stay tuned. <laughs> Uh, I mentioned earlier that biocrud reactors also provide enhanced oxygen delivery to the biofilm. Um, so each of our biocrud reactors comes with a integrated aeration system that is equipped directly underneath the unit. So um, you can kind of see it here but not really, but that's where it's located. Um, and that allows the rising air bubbles that are coming from this diffuser to come into direct contact with the microorganisms. So the aeration system consists of basically what is a fine bubble diffuser tubing that has a very high oxygen transfer efficiency, um, higher than you would see using a coarse bubble blower or similar, which means that you can put more dissolved oxygen into the water column using less energy. Um, this also helps to improve ammonia reduction since we can get an abundance of DO in our reactors and therefore reduce the competition for DO between your BOD reducing bacteria and ammonia reducing bacteria. So overall, you end up decreasing your cost and energy demands while increasing the performance of your system, thanks to this um, bubble tubing diffuser that we've got. So there are a couple other advantages to using bu bubble tubing diffusers with our biocred reactors. I already mentioned that less energy is required to get more DO, so we are able to use energy efficient compressors to aerate our diffusers. So typically, we only need one three quarter horsepower compressor per reactor. Um, so as you can see on this chart to the right, you can see this is a chart of biocords, capex and opex costs versus the competitors who are using blowers to achieve the same amount of airflow. So as you can see um, from the area shaded in red, uh, there are significant operational cost savings um, in addition to the improved performance when using this kind of bubble tubing with our biocord reactors. And we are able to opt for these more energy efficient systems because our biofilm is fixed in place. So our media is static. Um, unlike suspended systems or even moving biofilm systems like MBBRs or RBCs where you're moving the media through the wastewater, um, we don't need to expend that energy maintaining the movement of the bugs or the carriers for the bugs. So we can just focus all the energy into getting the oxygen in there. Um, but anyway, the fine bubbles are used uh, or are only released when the diffuser tubing becomes pressurized. So in addition, clogging or buildup of the sediment on the diffusers isn't typically an issue, which helps keep maintenance costs at a minimum. So the fine bubbles being released also helps our biofilms to self-regulate or self-clean. Um, the mixing action of the fine bubbles actually aids in the sloughing off of free-floating bacteria, um, dead biomass, or sediment, which allows the biofilm to be continuously replenishing itself um, with active and proliferating bacteria. And we have seen this uh, in experiments in the past. Um, which we will be talking about in future webinars as well. So in this way, the biocord biofilm is self-perpetuating and doesn't require any regular cleaning schedule or special operational maintenance to sustain itself, which is plus. And lastly, while we're on the topic of the diffusers, um, I also want to talk about turbulence. So although we don't need to keep our media suspended, the turbulence from the fine bubbles has the additional, additional advantage of preventing ice buildup over top of our biocord reactors. Um, and so that allows for year-round uninterrupted performance. This is particularly useful for open systems like lagoons or outdoor basins that experience reduced performance in the winter due to freezeover. 
So keeping the water mixed also really helps to prevent some heat loss as warmer lagoon water can be better recirculated. Um, and for the really cold applications, we can also recommend some additional methods of preventing heat loss and improving cold weather treatment, such as floating covers or heated side stream units. Um, and we'll be discussing more about wintertime performance optimization in our webinar next week. And finally, before we move on, uh, here's a quick teaser for the cold weather webinar that we'll be hosting next week. Um, so if it's relevant to you at all, please don't forget to re register. Um, we'll be sharing some really useful information and going through some case studies that I think you might find really interesting. Uh, but for now, I'll take a look at one of the first data sets we collected from a cold weather biocord project where we observed nitrification and ammonia reductions in a cold chamber as we progressively lowered the ambient temperature from around 17 degrees Celsius to less than five degrees Celsius, as you can see on this axis here. Um, this was a pretty small scale system that was treating septic wastewater. Um, but as you can see, after this initial acclimatization period, BioCord was able to maintain over 98% ammonia removal rates for the duration of the project, um, demonstrating pretty excellent resilience to the cold temperature effect on microbial activity. So now that we've gone over what exactly BioCord is and how it works, I want to go into a bit more detail about its applications and what it can do. So I mentioned that BioCord houses a very robust biofilm, and because of that, it's quite resistant and adaptable to high organic loads or conditions that would typically shock suspended sludge systems or conventional biological treatment systems. Biocord reactors are a bit more dynamic than that. Um, they can help bacteria acclimatize to the conditions they're exposed to and allow for more flexibility in comparison to suspended sludge systems. So this makes them suitable for quite a wide range of applications, provided that the minimum requirements for microbial growth and activity are sustained. So what are these minimum requirements? Well, of course, it depends on what bacteria you're trying to upregulate, what your targets for treatment are. Um, but in general, we want to make sure that there is, number one, enough food for the bacteria. So typically, this is in the form of either BOD or nitrogen. Um, we also want to maintain sufficient alkalinity for nitrification if ammonia targets are our goal, and also ensure that enough oxygen is being delivered to the biofilm so that the bacteria can use it. As well, bacteria are quite sensitive to pH, so we want to make sure the pH levels are within an optimal range, and trace levels of magnesium and phosphorus are also needed for biofilm formation. Um, lastly, for, bio for biological treatment to work, you need to ensure you've got a long enough retention time or a solid retention time uh, and mixing to limit the, and as well limit the toxicity entering your system. So I've listed some examples of biological inhibitors on the right. Um, I'm going to leave this slide at that. Um, you can kind of look at these. Um, and if you're learning, if, and if you're interested in learning a bit more about optimizing biological activity, I will also be touching on that in future webinars. So talking about applications, um, given what I just said, I think it almost goes without saying that municipal wastewater treatment plants are the largest sector that can benefit from biocord reactors um, because this municipal wastewater is rich, but not too rich in BOD and ammonia. And facilities treating municipal waste often have challenges reducing ammonia to below discharge regulations, particularly in the wintertime. So this makes biocord very nicely suited to retrofits or upgrades for septic lagoons, existing aeration basins, or to improve overall effluent quality at municipal sites. Um, I would shy away from using biocore to treat things like gray water streams, um, just because BOD, the BOD and ammonia content in gray water isn't really enough to sustain um, a proliferating biomass. Other than municipal wastewater, um, BioCord can also treat industrial high strength wastewaters, such as effluents from processing plants, mine tailings, leachate, breweries, or truck washes. And we've also designed some systems for the treatment of wastewater from agriculture or aquaculture, um, including dairy lagoons. 
which have very high BOD content uh, or shrimp farms where elevated ammonia can actually be quite detrimental to animal growth. So you'd want to remove as much of that as possible in a way that's not going to be disruptive um, to the existing ecosystem. So I wanted to show you these results from a study we conducted with Queen's University pretty early on to determine Biocor's potential to treat high strength ammonia waste streams, um, such as mining effluents or landfill leachate. So using a synthetic wastewater feed, we slowly increase the concentration of feed ammonia entering our Biocor reactor from about 175 milligrams per liter to 1,000 milligrams per liter. And then we observed the reductions by biocord. So you did this in duplicate using biocord in a sequential batch feed reactor as well as a continuous feed reactor, just to note the differences in operational modes for our internal knowledge. Uh, and what we saw was that a single bench scale biocord reactor containing only about one meter of biocord was able to achieve over 99% ammonia reductions at wastewater concentrations as high as 750 milligrams per liter. Um, so that indicates a really good ability to treat these high strength streams, especially considering that this 750 ppm upper limit could have probably been surpassed um, if we had continued to experiment by adding more biocord to the system. Um, so biocord reactors can be particularly helpful for facilities looking to avoid uh, sewer discharge overage fines um, when they send process effluent to the sewer. I mentioned that biocord reactors can treat almost any type of wastewater as long as the minimum requirements for microbial growth are met. So by integrating different components into our biocord systems, we can actually broaden the types of applications that we can use biocord for, um, or just even further optimize its performance in typical applications. Um, and we do have another webinar about process optimization that Roberta will be hosting. So join us for that to get more details. Um, but just for now, as an example, we can add things like chemical dosing um, to maintain an optimal pH or baffle curtains to um, achieve ideal conditions or minimize short circuiting to ensure that all flow is being passed through our reactors. So um, this is an example in this picture to the right, which shows how you could possibly use baffles to increase your retention time or your treatment time. Um, so yeah, kind of a, a raceway system to direct the flow through a series of biocord reactors. You can also do something like pretreatment to remove high concentrations of solids. Um, and alternatively, we can do so stuff like cycle um, aeration. So cycle your compressors on and off to achieve energy efficiency or TN reductions. Um, yep. Uh, oh yeah, and so there's also Sorry, there's also the a potential for some combined applications using two different solutions from Bishop. So we can pair our Bishop solids management solution with our biocord reactors to create a really effective um, plug and play system to treat streams that are high in solids or high in debris, that kind of thing. So many of you are probably already familiar with our Bishop Solids Management Solution, which we've used for many years in applications of all sizes. Uh, for those of you who aren't, it's essentially a geotextile bag called a geotube that acts as kind of a filter. So if you have a high solids waste stream, you can flock the material using polymers before pumping it into the geotextile bag. And the majority of the TSS or the solids will be retained within the bag while the filtrate is allowed to pass through. So for example, um, you can see here a photo of raw wastewater from a brewery prior to entering any treatment or prior to entering the geotubes. Um, here are the solids that are actually get consolidated within the geotube, and here is the filtrate that comes off of it. So the filtrate is typically quite low in solids and TSS or any metals or particulate matter that has been associated with the TSS, um, but it can still be really high in soluble nutrients and organics, um, depending on what types of wastewater. So for this example, for brewery waste, you can often get soluble BOD con concentrations exceeding 4,000 milligrams per liter. Um, but in general, the low solids, high food content of a geotube filtrate makes it almost perfectly suited for a biocord reactor system. So geotubes can act as a really effective pretreatment step to biocord, and it really actually enhances its, pro its performance. 
Um, like I showed before, an example of this is using Jutube and Biocord in tandem to treat brewery waste, which can be very high solids and BOD, which can be very high in solids and BOD. So in this schematic, uh, the protein matter, barley and wheat, which is first removed by the Biocord reactor system, gets captured within the Jutube units, leaving a soluble BOD in the filtrate of around 7,000 to 8,000 milligrams per liter, um, which is then treated by the biocord reactor system and then able to be discharged. So this is another example of a system that we actually just recently set up in New Zealand to treat effluent from a truck wash service center. Um, our clients here wanted to reduce contaminants, particularly ammonia, from their truck wash sump to below the domestic limits um, so that they could safely discharge. Um, so as you can see, this top row, uh, <clears throat> in this top row, sorry, excuse me, uh, the raw wastewater is quite high strength with a TSS concentration of 190 ppm, a BOD of 58 ppm, and ammonia of 350 ppm. So we set up a two-stage treatment system for them using geotubes first to remove the TSS and particulate matter, and then biocord following that to treat the filtrate. Um, so as you can see, the geotube really helps optimize the filtrate for nutrient removals by biocord um, by reducing a lot of the TSS that may have clogged the biofilm or reduced the surface area availability in the biofilm. Um, as well, any heavy metals or pathogens that may have been associated with a particulate matter also gets removed by um, this TSS removal. Um, post biocord, you can see that this system has been pretty successful so far in reducing all the key contaminants to below the domestic limits. Um, so yeah, so this was a smaller system, as you can see in this photo here. Uh, the space uh, on site was limited, so we were actually able to retrofit some biocord cassettes into kind of a tote system, as you can see in this picture here. But this is just a great example of how we can scale up or scale down a system or make adjustments to it based on site-specific requirements. And we do this for every project. We evaluate um, the size, the footprint avail availability, wastewater characteristics, and then design our systems accordingly. Uh, this is another example of how we can optimize biocore to treat something like mine tailings. So since the pH of mine wastewater is often too low to be conducive to sufficient biological activity, we can provide a nutrient slurry to the system to bring the pH up and allow for a biofilm to form and reduce ammonia. Okay. Lastly, I wanted to share this data that we collected during a project of ours focused on removing total nitrogen removals because it really nicely illustrates how we can change the operation and design of the biocord reactor system to be tailored to the site-specific treatment targets, as I just mentioned. So here, uh, since removing total nitrogen requires both oxygen-rich and oxygen-poor conditions, uh, we started cycling our aeration on and off so that we were able to achieve both nitrification and denitrification. Um, so you can see the total nitrogen influent bars are on the left side. They're kind of shaded in a lighter color. Uh, and the effluent total nitrogen values are stacked up directly on the right of these bars. Um, and the fractionation of the total nitrogen com components are shown on this bottom legend. So by experimenting with different aeration cycles and carbon to nitrogen ratios, we managed to achieve over 98% reductions in total nitrogen using biocord. And again, we do have a webinar coming out on process optimization where we'll speak a little bit more in detail about this project. So join us for that if you can. But to summarize, biocord can be used in a lot of different scenarios. So if there's an application out there that you're maybe unsure about, um, please don't hesitate to contact us and inquire about Biocord because um, we've got a really great experienced team uh, behind us. We're, they're really innovative people, so we will work to find a solution that will help you. So before I get into a couple of case studies, I do just want to highlight our plug and play pilot system. Um, so this is our prefabricated containerized biocord unit that can be rented by our clients who may want to see biocord's performance demonstrated at their facility. 
Um, it's also a great method to collect representative data uh, of your wastewater to ensure that our full-scale biocore design is tailored to your specific wastewater um, if you don't already have a historical data set. And we do also have a webinar on piloting coming up, which speaks to what kind of data you should be collecting and how to ensure your pilot project is successful as well as scalable. So if you haven't signed up for that one, I highly encourage you to do so. Um, our plug and play system can be installed and fully operational in about one day. Uh, it contains up to four tanks and four biocord reactors and the operation of the tanks can vary depending on what your treatment targets and full scale flows will end up being. Um, the intake skid is VFD controlled, so we can ensure that we're properly mo monitoring the performance and control the flow entering the system. Um, right now, our default pump is sent, set to a max flow of 32 cubic meters a day. And there's also sample ports installed for ease of um, sample collection. So in between each tank, we can see how each reactor is performing and kind of tailor our flow rates or um, troubleshoot if we need to based on those results. So the pilot system is designed for low energy demand and can be used in remote or off-grid locations. It's relatively easy to operate. It requires minimal operator oversight, except for sample collection, um, visual maintenance checks, and the occasional flow rate adjustment or aeration adjustment based on how it's performing. So if you are interested in this, we do have some PDF brochures available that we will be sending out to all the attendees along with the slides from this presentation. And I should also mention that these units are available for purchase as a permanent treatment system. So depending on the size of your facility and your full scale flow rates, our containerized system can actually act as a permanent side stream process to help meet your treatment targets. Um, and then if things change and you need to improve your treatment even further, or if your flow rates increase even more, um, the system is modular. So more containerized systems can be added as needed and they can be moved from site to site, et cetera. Finally, I'm going to end this webinar off by presenting a couple of case studies. Um, the first one being the design basis for a full-scale enhanced ammonia removal system for the village of Limoges, which is a small community located in Ontario. So the village of Limoges was looking to upgrade its existing treatment facility, which consists of a lagoon system receiving about 3,500 cubic meters of wastewater a day. Um, the, municip the municipality was operating on an intermittent discharge schedule and wanted to upgrade the capacity of the lagoon such that its operation could be switched from intermittent to continuous discharge. So they wanted to improve their ammonia as well as BOD removals to achieve a consistently high effluent quality that would meet discharge guidelines. Um, but they did have some limited resources, so they couldn't justify the capital required to upgrade their facility with new infrastructure builds or or a mechanical plant. So we designed a biocord reactor system that will be able to provide year-round ammonia reductions from about an influent concentration of 30 milligrams per liter down to less than one milligrams per liter in the treated effluent. So this particular system required 60 biocord units to be installed within two of the existing cells so 30 reactors per cell, uh, with the full flow split evenly between the two cells. So this is shown on the process flow diagram on the top right here. You can see this flow being flit, split to each of the cells. Um, and then biofill, uh, sorry, baffle curtains are also gonna be installed. Uh, kind of similar to what I talked to before to create kind of a raceway path for the flow to follow. And that's illustrated right here where my cursor is, um, if you guys can see. So by installing these baffles, it helps to create kind of a de defined path for the wastewater and it ensures that the majority of the flow is actually passing through the biocord reactors and getting treated um, instead of, like I said, just short circuiting directly to the outlet um, and bypassing some of the treatment that you're getting. And since this system has been designed to operate year round, a floating cover will also be installed over top of the lagoon in the winter to retain as much heat as possible within it. Um, and just uh, help maintain that high treatment capacity as well as we can as the temperatures start to drop. Oh yeah, and uh, talking about flow rates and short circuiting, um, we also do talk about using computational fluid dynamics 
to identify where in your system you might see some short circuiting happening uh, and where you might want to install a baffle. So if you're interested, sign up for that one as well. So the upgrades to the Moj are set to be complete this year, um, obviously with some delays due to the uh, current circumstances. Uh, but we did submit our design to be considered along with a number of very similar competing technologies. And the BioCord reactor system was chosen as the winning technology to be installed uh, due to its multiple advantages over other technologies, including its demonstrated ability to significantly reduce both BOD and ammonia, its low CAPEX and OPEX costs compared to some of its competitors, uh, its easy retrofit capability, uh, its customizability and modularity, its ability to treat wastewater in the cold as well as in the warm weather, so year-round treatment capabilities, its ability to increase solids retention time, prevent hydraulic washout, and minimize short circuiting. Uh, and we were also able to validate performance results using third-party modeling software, so we use GPSX for that. So moving on to our second case study, uh, the one that I'm going to go over lastly is regarding a biocord retrofit. So this problem statement came to us from a vegetable processing facility in Legumier, uh, which is in New Brunswick. So they were using a septic tank system to reduce TSS and BOD from their process wastewater, uh, which was doing okay uh, at reducing TSS, but really had minimal effect on the BOD reductions. And so the soluble starch and the BOD was overloading their system. And in addition, their pH levels in their system were a bit too low to sustain really good biological activity. Um, and lastly, they also had spatial constraints at their facility that prohibited them from adding any new infrastructure or treatment buildings like tanks and that kind of thing. So what we did, uh, we converted one of their existing septic tanks, the third one in the process flow, by retrofitting our system into their basin and converting it into an aerated biological treatment system. So you can see how we did that using um, curtains up here on the right. We just retrofitted these to sit directly within the tank. Um, and we also used an alkalinity dosing system to bring their pH levels up to a range that was more conducive to biological activity. And what we saw was that this new retrofit was able to help the facility reduce BOD to under the regulatory limits set by the New Brunswick Department of the Environment. So we were able to bring the BOD levels down to around 300 milligrams per liter from a high of over 1400 milligrams per liter. Um, and then we were also able to maintain a pH within a range that so such that it could be safely discharged without issue. So overall, uh, in this project, we were able to provide a cost-effective, simple solution for Legumier that did not involve any expensive infrastructure builds or components, just a simple tank conversion to a biocord reactor system. And that's almost it for this presentation. But before I end off, uh, I just want to talk about, a bit about Bishop and who we are before I open the floor to questions. Um, what I'd like to highlight about uh, is our technology focus as a company. As we've grown over the past 20 years, we've dedicated, dedicated a great deal of effort to developing technologies and systems that provide both economic and environmental benefits to our clients and their communities. So we do this by designing systems that are reliable, easy to operate and maintain, have low energy requirements and require very little infrastructure builds around them. Um, and of course, we couldn't do this without a great team. And we're very proud of the dedication that our team shows in working collaborative collaboratively with each other and our partners to continually improve the solutions we offer. And we do have a number of different ones that can be used separately or in tandem to address a whole array of wastewater treatment and solids management issues. I mentioned the Bishop Solar Water Bishop Water Solids Management Solution briefly in this webinar. So these geotextile containers can be used not only for sludge and solids dewatering, but they can also be used for shoreline protection and the prevention of shoreline erosion, um, as well as in permanent process facilities that require TSS removal or pretreatment. Um, regarding our biocord reactors, as I've covered in this webinar, they're used for biological nutrient removal and cold weather treatment. Um, we also offer a range of products that can help to augment treatment or be integrated with our other solutions. 
to allow for a more turnkey or plug and play system that addresses more than one challenge at a time. So for example, our chemical conditioning and polymer injection systems are used in conjunction with our solids management solution to effectively effectively flocculate and help separate solids from a liquid stream. Um, beneficial bacteria, uh, which is right here in the middle, uh, can also be used to help with bio augmentation. So these are essentially blends of different type of wastewater treating bacteria um, that you can add to your system to help inoculate it or give it a little bit of a boost um, if you're struggling to maintain a population of a certain type of bacteria. Um, and lastly, we also offer a rare earth coagulant for phosphorus removal, and it's called RE300. So this is essentially a novel, uh, more effective and more versatile, as well as less hazardous alternative to chemical coagulants like alum or ferric um, that's used to precipitate out phosphorus. So RA300 can be used very easily to help achieve really stringent phosphorus limits at only a one-to-one -one molar ratio. So you also get less chemical usage and less sludge production using RA300. And that's it. So if you are interested in BioCord for your application, please feel free to contact either Roberta or myself. Um, as well, if you want to receive updates or read about some of our past and ongoing projects, don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter, which can be done by visiting the Bishop Water webpage. Uh, we will be sending out these slides as well as some literature to all of the attendees today, including PDFs of our general, general BioCord brochure, as well as a brochure for our containerized system. Uh, and I do also want to mention that we have a technical results document that is available upon request if you're interested in using BioCord for a potential project uh, and want to see a summary of results that we've obtained from some of our past projects. So that includes um, the BOD, TSS, and ammonia removal efficiencies, the descriptions of the sites that we use these the BioCord in, and the overall performance as it relates to meeting the WSER limits. So if you want to get a hold of this document, please contact myself or Roberta and we can pass it along to you. So thank you much. Thank you very much for your attention during this presentation. Uh, so we can answer some of your questions now. So here we go. I guess I can just start from the top. <laughs> uh, so do you guys supply BioCord with additional microorganisms? So we don't need to supply BioCord with additional microorganisms. They will develop in response to the wastewater. So typically the answer is no. Um, usually during startup, uh, to speed up how fast our systems reach steady state, we can uh, seed our reactors using like uh, waste activated sludge or WAS or ROS from a local wastewater treatment plant. Um, you can also use something like Bacterius to augment it as well, but that's typically not needed. Um, the BioCord will develop microorganisms on its own. Um, and if your question is about bacterial blends, we can supply that for other, for other applications. Um, just sh shoot me an email and we can talk about it, whether it's suited for you. Uh, next question, what is the material used for the cord media? It's a polypropylene blend. Um, yeah, so it's relatively inert. It won't disintegrate uh, and it can be cleaned pretty easily. Uh, how often do you clean the biofilms and use fresh media? I think I kind of briefly mentioned this, but we don't need to clean the biofilms at all. So it's pretty self-perpetuating um, because of the ability for our aeration system to slough off any of the inactive or dead biomass. So it's continually self-perpetuating and it continually making room for uh, new bacteria to grow. So unless uh, your system is clogged. So for example, if you have an influx of really high solids or really high TSS above 200 milligrams per liter or anything like that um, on a consistent basis, you may get clogging of your biofilm. And in that case, you would want to clean them. You can do that just by power washing the strands uh, or turning on the aeration, kind of like diverting some of that flow to just one biocord reactor to allow those bubbles to kind of slough off anything that's that's accumulated, that's foul, that's fouled. Um, 
okay uh is it a grab sample when we i think i i guess that's referring to uh some of the data that we've presented yes uh any data that we've presented here have been grab samples um at the influent and the effluent as well as any in between if, if any of the graphs um indicated that um typical cost of piloting any installations in alberta or similar cold weather so yes uh I'll address the first one first. So the typical cost of piloting will vary depending on your application. Uh, what usually when we're evaluating pilot projects, we'll collect all the information that we need uh, and then determine what the best duration of time is um, and if any additional equipment is needed. So it really depends, um, but it, it is a rental system and the base price would be around uh, 5,000 a month. Um, to rent out the system. And then some of those costs also can be put towards credit for purchase of a full-scale system as well. Um, we did do projects in Alberta. We don't have any full-scale installations in Alberta, but we have conducted projects uh, uh, and cold weather projects as well. And I will be talking about that in our next webinar concerning cold weather treatment. So if you would like to know a bit more about that, please attend that webinar. Um, can it be installed in a channel? Uh, if so, the typical retention time. So uh, it can, it depends on the dimensions. So for this one, I would just say, um, send me the specifications of whatever application you're looking for and I can evaluate uh, whether or not it would be suitable. Um, so lifting, so there's a question about the lifting equipment required to conduct maintenance in a lagoon application. So yeah, so like you can see in this picture here, we do submerge the biocord reactors in situ and we do that using a crane. Um, so depending on what size the biocord reactors are, um, they, some will be heavier than others, but you can remove them pretty easily using a crane uh, if, if you do need to do maintenance on them. Uh, typically, there's no regular or periodic maintenance that is required. It usually is on a case-by-case -case basis if you get a toxic influent or if there is damage because of equipment or something like that, um, like um, like maybe equipment damage, one of the media strands and you need to replace it. Um, but other than that, you wouldn't really need to remove the biocord reactors. Um, you can, they, they can stay in there. Um, and then we have a couple of other questions. Oh, maximum flow treated in a Canadian installation. Again, I would revert, uh, I would set, shoot me an email about that one. Um, our flows vary and I can't think of it off the top of my head, but we have design systems to treat pretty large scale flows. Um, we designed a system in St. Henry that was receiving, I believe around 1500 cubic meters um, up to maybe 3500 cubic meters, but it can definitely, uh, it definitely depends on the application and what your influent and effluent or what your influent concentrations are and what your treatment targets are. So again, if you have a, a specific question or if you would like me to evaluate your project, please shoot me an email. Um, I had a question about geotubes. So what kind of HRT is maintained in the geotubes? That depends on the flow rate. And again, if uh, it depends on the flow rate, the amount of solids coming in and the percent solids of that as well. So shoot me an email if you have a specific question. Um, next question, what is the base metal in the RE300 coagulant? So it's a mix of cerium and lanthanum, which are rare earth metals. Uh, so these metals actually naturally complex with phosphorus and they spe complex specifically with phosphorus. So it doesn't form a flock uh, where phosphorus kind of just is indirectly attracted to it, it binds, um, it's an ionic bond with phosphorus. Um, and that's what makes it so efficient and able to reduce phosphorus at a one-to-one -one ratio. Would the air diffusers require maintenance? Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, this would be the second aspect for maintenance if we're talking about other components other than just the biofilm. Um, the compressors that we use have a lifetime, can operate continuously, and they have a lifetime of around three to five years. So after five years or after um, continuous duty of however many hours they can run for, um, they do require 
a little bit of maintenance. It takes maybe an hour or less and they can be sent in um, t for repair. So you don't have to do it yourself. You can send them into us and we can get them repaired for you and have some redundancy compressors um, on the side for you to use right away. So there's no downtime for that. And I think that's it. I think I've addressed all the questions. Um, if I missed any, or if you would like, if you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to, like I said, email either Roberta or myself. I would be happy to answer them. Um, yeah, and like I said, we will be providing these slides to everyone, and I thank you all for coming. Um, thank you very much.